Welcome, Matterporters. I wanted to take this opportunity and show you guys exactly how you would scan using the Matterport Pro 2. So first of all, let's go ahead and take a look at the system and what the uh, accessories that are required for you to process a scan. You'll notice I'm using an iPad, but you can use any iOS device, iPhone or iPad, as long as it's a version that is later than the iPad Air and with the iPhone, a version that is newer than the 6S. So that's the number one thing that you're gonna need is a mobile iOS device. Then what we have here is a tripod. We like the prosumer level Manfrotto tripods. As long as the tripod can hold up to 11 pounds, then you should be fine. The camera is about six to seven pounds and it rotates. So keep that in mind when choosing the right tripod. You'll also notice that I don't have a head on the tripod. So this is really the most ideal situation. If you do have a tripod already and it has a head, make sure that you take the head off before putting the camera on the tripod. What we do like to see is the tripod on that is the quick release mount. And on top of that is the camera. If I take the camera off the mount, basically I'll just loosen up this quick release clamp and you'll see that the camera comes off and on the bottom of the camera, you'll notice the quick release plate is already built into the camera. So you don't need the quick release plate. Please keep that in mind. Don't go connecting your quick release plate to the bottom of the camera. It's already built in. Basically, just like any other uh, quick release system, you just mount the camera on here and tighten it down. Make sure that this is uh, very tight and the camera is not going anywhere. I will be providing a link to a video that shows you a lot more about this camera, but just a really quick brief overview. What you have here in the Pro 2 Matterport camera is a true 3D camera, hence all the lenses, unlike traditional cameras that obviously just have the one lens. What you have on this camera is infrared projectors over here. These spray out a whole lot of little infrared dots all over the scene. And these projectors, along with the infrared sensors over here, these two work in combination, allowing the camera to actually see in 3D. The center column of lenses is your standard RGB sensors, just like you have on your phone. And those work together to get the entire photosphere a nice high resolution, 134 megapixel image resolution for the entire photosphere. And so it's because of the 3D capabilities of this camera that really differentiate this from any other 360 camera. That's what makes this camera a true 3D camera. Once you have the camera set up on the tripod, you'll notice that on the back of the camera, it's very basic. You have your on off button and a battery status button. This is essentially a point and shoot camera. This should not be confused or compared to your DSLR. It is a completely different animal. Now, before we go ahead and scan, the first thing that you're going to want to do is just take a look around and kind of lay out the, uh, the groundworks and where it is that you want to scan. Prior to that, assuming you're doing residential real estate, what you would want to do is go around and fluff any pillows, make sure any toilet seats are down, things like that. Just make sure that the entire space is ready for you to scan. You don't want to have to scan, have the camera see something, and then delete and, and so on and so forth. Make sure that everything is ready for you to scan before even starting. Connecting your mobile device to the camera couldn't be any easier. I'm just going to turn on my iPad. From here, the first thing that I want to do is first go into settings, go into Wi-Fi and look for the camera serial number in the option of Wi-Fi. Find it right there. And now I see the blue check mark, which indicates that I'm connected to the camera. These two devices are now talking to one another. I don't need to worry about the fact that my iPad is telling me I don't have an internet connection. That's only because this camera is not connected to the internet. So as long as these two are communicating, you're good to go. Let's go back home and launch the Capture app. In the Capture app, what I'm going to first do is press the little plus symbol and create a new model. Now I have a blank slate and I'm ready to go ahead and start scanning. So the first thing you'll notice in this room is that it's not so big. I don't need uh, too many scans here. Let's look and see what the first scan is going to look like. I'm just going to position the camera in the beginning right over here. It doesn't matter which direction the camera is facing when it begins. What I can do as a scanner is walk around the back side of the camera or just find a place to hide. But in this case, I'll just go ahead and walk around the back side. All 
All right, so the first scan is done. What's happening right now is all the information is being uh, transferred from the camera to my iPad. It already says that I can go ahead and move the camera. With this first scan, that's obviously fine because there's nothing else to align with, so I can do that. Um, and as you can see right now on my iPad, uh, that first scan has been aligned and is in place. And I can kind of see uh, the layout of the room already. You can see over here on this side that uh, there's a lot more black and that indicates that the camera wasn't able to see that information in 3D. So this is actually a clear indication of where I should move the camera to. Basically, you need to think of two things as you're scanning the environment. That is filling in the black in capture. So you kind of uh, optimize the 3D model and really flesh out everything as you're going through the space. The second thing to think about is that as you're moving the camera through the space, you are determining the path that visitors will be able to go to. So visitors to your model can only visit scan positions that have been scanned. They can see the entire dollhouse from any angle, but when they're inside walking through, they're only gonna be able to move to where the camera was positioned. So keep those two things in mind as you're scanning this environment. Okay, so right now I'm just gonna go ahead and move in this direction. This is in the direction that the camera wasn't able to see. And I'll just go ahead and process another scan. All right, so the second scan is done. All the information is moving into the iPad right now. And as soon as uh, I have the information here, it's gonna say aligning here at the top, and then it's gonna position the scan accordingly. Now, it's very important at this point to always look at the minimap in capture and make sure that it is properly aligned, okay? Uh, if it's not properly aligned, that it could indicate that there's been a misalignment. It's important to spot those, although they are rare, it does happen. Make sure you delete a misalignment, move the camera back a little bit closer to where it was uh, initially scanned, and then try and scan again. In this case, you can see that uh, the black area that was just beneath the number one scan is now filled in because the second uh, position was able to see that area. You can also see that uh, more of the black area was filled in. So now we have a much, much better model data to go on and I can just kind of continue going down uh, in this direction if I want to more fully flesh out this room. In this case, however, uh, because we're just doing a demo, I want to show you how to address doorways. So let's go over here into this little conference room and we're going to check this out. So as far as doorways are concerned, it's very important to have the camera just outside the doorway and then again just inside the doorway. So I would have a scan uh, right here and then I would just move it inside the doorway and have another scan there. The reason for that is because doorways are blind corners and it can't see as much into the room and therefore there isn't as much information to do the alignment. So really try and maximize that amount of overlapping alignment data, making it a lot easier for the capture app to align between these two scan positions. In this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and hide around the corner and I'll see you back here in a second. All right, so the camera did its thing. It's ready to be moved. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it inside the doorway. All the things that are in place should remain in place. You don't wanna move anything. And this is why before I mentioned that you wanna go through the property, make sure that everything is as it should be. If you're doing residential real estate, this is especially important. As long as everything is in place, you can go ahead and do your scan. So in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and scan again. All right, so that scan is done. And now basically we're just gonna wait for this one to align and I'll show you uh, what that looks like in the capture app and how that worked out. And you can see that as I'm working through this space, the minimap is slowly kind of fleshing out. So it's important to keep that in mind, just kind of have that uh, fundamental understanding of how the system works. Basically your first initial scan, scan number one in the minimap is at 0 .000 in the 3D model and everything gets kind of built out from there. So everything's got to connect. Now the camera does have the ability of just capturing a 360, we call it a 360 view. And what that means is that I can pick up the camera, 
go outside. Again, if I'm doing residential real estate, this is a really good example. Have it scan a 360 view and that will not be aligned with the rest of the uh, 3D data. It's just being used as a kind of a panorama or a sphere of that point. And you can add it as a kind of a pin to your model uh, once everything is done processing. So you can do 360 views anywhere around the property that are not aligned. You don't have to have them uh, next to other 3D scans. But if you're fleshing out the 3D model, it does have to connect to something that has been previously scanned. So right now, for example, let's pretend that I'm done with this room. I've done the scans uh, in the room. I don't have to scan my way out of the room. I just pick up the camera. I walk out here to a position that's already been scanned. And then I can kind of continue on uh, scanning uh, more of this property. And that's really pretty much it. Uh, there's not a whole lot to it. Uh, again, as long as you keep these two things in mind, fleshing out the 3D model, meaning filling in the black in your capture minimap, and keeping the navigation for your visitors in mind. So keep those two things in mind and uh, you'll do great.